Hello, everybody. Today is day 204, and we're reading from Isaiah chapter 31 through 34. Now, these first 40 chapters of Isaiah are loaded with doom and gloom. God is uh, confronting his people, and you'll see parallels of both uh, present-day situations, I mean that which was happening with Israel at that time, but also parallels with God addressing how things were going to all work out in the end. So there's a lot of eschatology, end times, uh, the second coming of Christ, the millennial reign, all of these things are wrapped up uh, in the book of Isaiah. Now in chapter 31, God is angry with his people. Now they're looking to Egypt. They're going down to Egypt for help. And look, at they saw their chariots, they saw their horses, they saw how strong Egypt was, and they trusted in man instead of God. And this is a common danger for you and I to look for resources in the natural when God is demonstrated again and again his supernatural resources that are available to us. And so this angered God. Two things Israel refused to do. First, they refused to look to God for help. And secondly, they refused to seek the Lord. Now, these two things uh, are are common issues. I mean, that is, all of us are prone at times to look to others for help, or we fail to pursue God as uh, we ought to be. Now, there are two reasons that the Israelites trusted in, in Egypt was in vain. Um, the fact is, is that they are men and not God. That is, the uh, man uh, is here, it passes away, he's finite. And the second reason is that the horses are flesh, they're not spirit. And uh, Israel had literally turned away from the great God that had called them and preserved them, now looking to natural resources. Now, in chapter 32, uh, we're looking to the future reign of a king, and you and I know who that king is. That king is King Jesus. At his second coming, it's dealing with his reign over all of Israel, in fact, over all nations. And uh, did you see that uh, the word, uh, just a king, but he also says this, princesses will also rule with justice. And I don't know if you uh, grabbed a hold of that or not, but the fact is that that's talking about us. You see, the resurrected saints are going to rule with Christ as kings and priests. We will have a place, a uh, position of responsibility in the kingdom of God, of Jesus Christ. And, uh, and so it speaks about princesses will also rule with justice. And if you've had any thoughts that, uh, you know, this new earth or heaven is going to be a boring place where we just sit around and reminisce about our experiences here on earth, uh, recognize that God has uh, a kingdom and there's responsibilities and there are jurisdictions, all of these things that we're going to be playing into. Now, verse 15 says, until the spirit is poured out. Until. Now, at the outpouring, rather, of the Spirit upon Israel and the restoration of their land at the very end of the tribulation. So we've got the tribulation period, seven years. The last three and a half is the great tribulation. And this will be preceded by a terrifying judgment prior to this pouring out upon the people of Israel. Now, in chapter 34, God warns of a coming worldwide judgment. That is the great tribulation. It's that which uh, Jesus describes as there's never been one before and there'll be none like this. Jesus, this is Jesus at the end. He's going to confront the Antichrist. And uh, in fact, we know that all but one sixth will be destroyed in one day. And that's why uh, these verses here describe it, that it's going to take Israel seven months to bury Verse 4, the heavens are going to dissolve. There's going to be falling meteors and stars. This is the sixth seal that's mentioned in the book of Revelation. There's so many parallels here, that, that it's the, but it's the final judgment. In verse 5 and, and verse 8, uh, speaks of the day of the Lord. Now, we know the day of the Lord is that day of days when Christ, not in the rapture, but in his second coming, he will break through the sky, coming back with the hosts of heaven. He'll confront the Antichrist and all of those opposing nations against Israel, and uh, he will set up his eternal kingdom. Now, it says, verse 4, the heavens will be rolled up like a scroll, and then we're going to, this will be what's described, this battle is referred to as the battle of Armageddon. Then there will be what's described here in these chapter is an eternal temple in a an eternal city with an eternal people and verse 17 you'll see this that it's forever 
uh, it's, it's not just a span of time, but it's going to be forever that we're going to reign and live. And this is the beautiful thing about our spirit. We are created in the image of God. We're going to live forever. Verse 16 says, uh, search from the book of the Lord and read, not one of them shall fail. Now that's, that's placing a great deal of confidence. What God has said will come to pass. There'll be no altering. There'll be no, uh, no adjustments to this. It's an absolute total fulfillment of prophecy. Contrary to a lot of prophecy that seems to uh, um, be, you know, somewhat vague and uh, things don't maybe come to pass and, and we don't fully understand. The one thing we do know is these prophetic words through Isaiah and the other prophets, Joel and Daniel, and Jeremiah, all these are pointing clearly to a day that is marked. And Jesus describes it in which he's coming back the second time. So Isaiah deals with both the first coming and also deals with the second coming. And at the same time, it's dealing with uh, current situations that are going on in Israel. This is the, sometimes the amazing aspects of scripture. There can be a dual application. But one thing that is encouraging about all this, and we're hearing from the word of God, is that we must turn to God. We've got to look to him for our strength look to God for help, and we've got to seek the Lord, and all the more as we see that day coming, because it's going to get difficult. It's going to, we're going to see apostasy. We're going to see people falling away. We're going to see people making fun of these kind of thoughts and ideas, but you and I are going to stand upon the Word of God. And so don't look at Isaiah as a doom and gloom book, but rather a book that uncovers, first of all, that yes, there's going to be the justice and the judgment and the wrath of God that's going to be poured out upon the enemies of God, but that you and I, he's, he's preparing for us that we're going to rule and we're going to reign with him. We are ruling and reigning with him now in the spirit realm, but then it will be a physical kingdom that we will reign with him forever and ever and ever.